it doesn't make sense for them to maybe take offensive line in the first round. Yeah. But I, I've watched Powers Johnson. Yeah. And god damn, am I impressed. Like I've watched that guy toss people around and you look at him and go, Yep, he's ready for the next level. But uh yeah, what, what do you think about the upcoming draft and some of the prospects there? You got anybody you like? Jackson Powers Johnson, I think that's you know totally valid to you know to view him in that light. I see him on a a similar tier. I wouldn't say he's quite at the level of a Tyler Linderbaum coming out of Iowa, but he's pretty damn close. And you, you look at him on the same level as say a Creed Humphrey coming out of Oklahoma, which I think is pretty high praise, considering the fact one I had him as a first round grade. He didn't end up going that high because you know for whatever reason I'll never quite understand positional value, whatever. But That's exactly what it is, positional value. Yeah, which I think is I thought was BS because Preet Humphrey is very clearly a great football player and he has been in the pros. I think Powers Johnson is at a similar level as a prospect. I think Powers Johnson's gonna go round one for sure. I wouldn't be surprised. Somewhere around that uh Dolphin Steelers 2021 range, I wouldn't be shocked if he goes there. If he does fall into the second, then I think that some team's gonna get really lucky and be able to take advantage of that because he's young, he's strong, he's athletic, he's intelligent. I think he checks just about all the boxes you could at center. Just the one year as a starter, but even then, his uh, 2022 season, he showed a lot of versatility as essentially Oregon's sixth man along the offensive line. And he was one of the most efficient offensive linemen, granted in you know not a ton of snaps, but still probably I want to say like 200 or something as the key reserve for Oregon. And he was incredible. And he was incredible again this past year. He's someone that I really like. If the Bears trade back, I definitely consider him. Uh, I think, at least in my honest opinion, you're taking one of Roma Dunze or Malik Neighbors at nine or you're trading back. If neither of those guys are available at nine, you trade back if there's a good enough offer. Obviously, that's way easier said than done. But I think it's pretty clear where the value is. Like, you're, look, you're not going to get Marvin Harrison Jr. at nine, you know, just being realistic. So I know there's been some chit chat about Marvin Harrison Jr. recently. And you look at last year, uh, Jalen Carter wasn't going to drop to nine either, but he did. I mean, you never, never know how these things play out. Um, however, I think you're right. The, the, chances of Marvin Harrison Jr. dropping that far are slim to none. But when you look at positional value, like you said, wide receivers, you can pick them up all throughout the draft. There's not a pass rusher or an interior defensive tackle that you would find appealing with pick nine. I think the Falcons are going to take Dallas Turner, the edge rusher out of Alabama at eight. I just think that makes too much sense. They've invested at wide receiver. They've signed Kirk Cousins, so they have their quarterback for the next couple of years. Edge rushers always, it's been a massive need for Atlanta for years. They've never addressed it. Turner is a freak athlete. He has the highest ceiling of any edge rusher in this class. I think that he'd make a lot of sense there. He's not my top edge rusher, but he's really damn close. So I have Jared Verse as my top edge rusher in this class just because I think he's the safest and the fact that I have really, really similar grades with him, Dallas Turner, and Layat Tulatu out of UCLA. They're all neck and neck and neck on my board in the way that they grade it out. It's just a matter of, okay, how am I going to organize them? Because I think Latu had the best film, but he's got an extensive injury history. Who knows, you know, how, what the medicals are going to look like. We, you know, as outsiders, we don't have access to that information. I can't confidently say, oh, he's going to be fine, you know, because he did have to medically retire in college. Dallas Turner the most physically gifted of the three, the fastest of the three. But at the same time, I don't think he's the most technically sound. If anything, I think he's the least technically sound of the top three edge rushers. Jared Verse, in my opinion, is the the best blend of being a safe pick, being a high quality technician off the edge, having a good understanding of how to string together movements with your hands in order to shed blocks, both as a pass rusher and as a run defender. And he's a very good athlete too. I think that that's getting lost is he tested incredibly well. His his burst off the snap on tape, his flexibility turning the corner, all very good. So versus my top guy, from a pure value perspective, I don't think I'd take him at nine. I'd 100% be down, say, if you trade to like 12 or 13 and he's still there, I'd take him in a heartbeat. And you could pick up maybe, you know, an extra third rounder, 
maybe a second if you're feeling frisky, if you want to do like a pick swap or something. I don't know. But I do think that if they do trade back, Verse would be a great get. Lot two would be two uh, if the medicals turn out all right with him. Again, those are guys I'd be fine with in trade downs. That'd be more after, say, 14 or 15. If you move into the late teens, I'd be completely fine with that because that means you're getting a second round pick. That means that you're adding additional high end value. Uh, But yeah, those are just a handful of the guys that I do like. But if I'm at nine, it's neighbors, a Dunze, or try to trade down. Um, Neighbors, one. Marvin Harrison Jr., Roma Dunze, too. So if you get neighbors at nine or, God forbid, like Roma Dunze, yeah, for sure, that's a can't miss. But, like, in terms of overall, I think if you don't get that at nine, I think your best move as a franchise is moving back. You need to sit there and pick up some more draft picks, right? You're missing a second-round pick. Dropping back from nine would definitely – could potentially haul you some of those uh, picks back and whatnot. Uh, What do you think of a guy like Brennan Rice? I know he's projected to go in the third round. Um, yeah. Even if we don't drop back from nine, potentially if he's still available, like in the third round, I mean, he played with Caleb. I expect him to go round three. I like, like you said, that's generally where the consensus is on him. I'm admittedly a bit lower on him than the consensus. I think it's such a stacked wide receiver class that there are a handful of guys who are more polished at this stage. who can create better separation than rice. Personally, I'd rather wait a round or two and take Taj Washington, another USC wide receiver. He's not nearly as big, but he's faster. He's more explosive out of his breaks as a route runner. It creates better separation. Uh, and he had a drop percentage of less than 2% in 2023. I know he had a bit of a drop issue in 2022, but cleaned that up. Uh, he was the higher targeted receiver at USC. So I like rice. Don't get me wrong. I think that there's definitely potential there. I think he's a good athlete for how big he is a uh, natural pass catcher, good ball skills. There's definitely stuff to like there. I just don't know exactly if, you know, say if you're projecting him in a wide receiver three role, especially in a, a Shane Waldron offense that, you know, went, pretty heavy on 11 personnel having three wide receivers out there. I don't know if Brendan Rice is a day one starter in the NFL. Right out of the gate, I feel like you could probably find more pro-ready receivers to who could contribute uh, in that range and maybe even a little bit later, even if they don't have the, the exact uh, upside that Rice has. Yeah, see, when I look at um, draft history, yeah, and like you mentioned, positional value, uh, one thing I keep seeing is that – you know, these wide receivers, they get taken all over the place and oh, yeah. they tend to hit more in later rounds than some of the other positions do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just some names that come to mind. Antonio Brown was a fifth round pick. Tyree Kill was a fifth round pick. Cooper Cup was a third round pick. I mean, last year you had Puka Nakua going yeah. to the fifth round. So y- you can find guys later on in the draft that wind up coming out and really having some impact um, mm-hmm. on the field right away. And uh, however, when it comes to defensive ends, defensive tackles, Mm-hmm. You look at all these guys like Joey Bose. The only one that's out there is like Max Crosby went in the fourth round. Yeah. But everybody else was like a first or second round pick. And, and so, you know, that's where to me it's like, okay, I get that if that's a need on this team, it, it, you might wind up having to pick a guy in the first or second round. Mm-hmm.